Here we go. Okay, we're going to start now. And I'd like to invite you to make sure that you have a headset because as you know, it's a silent pavilion and if you don't have a headset, you won't hear anything. Um, and I want to also just ask you please to make sure that you sign uh, the register that uh, will pass around if, uh, uh, during the uh, proceedings because um, we are such a successful pavilion <laughs> that the security, the health security people pounced on us and, and uh, registered an official complaint that we weren't compliant with the health COVID uh, protocols. So, you know, you win some, you lose some, but I can't afford uh, them to come back and uh, shut us down. It's too important what we're doing here. So just as by way of introduction, my name is Trevor Sandwith. I'm with IUCN. I'm the director of IUCN's Global Protected and Conserved Area Program. And tonight we're celebrating protected and conserved areas through three, two really important programs. One is Biopama, Biodiversity and Protected Areas Management, and the other is BEST, which is about biodiversity in the European overseas uh, states, territories, and so on. Um, and they share, uh, uh, in a way, a common uh, I I idea. They're about um, information. They're about catalyzing action on the ground. They're about learning from that action, building knowledge, exchanging and sharing knowledge, disseminating that learning and, and knowledge, and building capacity. And as you know, that's the agenda that we're all concerned about as we negotiate the global biodiversity framework, and we see this uh, rolling out uh, in the world. The big gap is an implementation gap, and the implementation gap is caused by a lack of capacity and all the other aspects. So this is a really important uh, strategic approach. So I'd like to, um, first of all, just acknowledge that this whole, this work is supported in most part by the European Union through and with the Organization of Africa, Caribbean and, uh, and Pacific States, with support from Agence France du Développement, the French Development Agency, and also OFP, the L'Office uh, Francais de la Biodiversité. And, uh, and we are you know, in a partnership. Many of these programs are stitched together uh, so that they can amplify and magnify what we're trying to do. So, um, I would also like especially to welcome uh, some special guests tonight. We're really privileged to have with us uh, the um, Minister of Environment uh, for the Republic of Rwanda. And this is Dr. Jean d'Arc, uh, Mujawa Maria. I had to practice that one a little bit. <laughs> um, but it sounds like uh, I'm, Af I'm African and it's an African uh, sounding name. I'd also like to uh, welcome uh, Crystal Pratt. Crystal is the Assistant Secretary General for the Organization of Africa, uh, Caribbean and uh, Pacific States, but focused on environment and climate. And I'd like to welcome our great friend, Philippe Maillot, who is kind of the genius behind a lot of these, uh, these things. Uh, so it's great to have you all with us uh, this evening. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't also uh, uh, welcome my colleagues. It's so great to have the regional directors with us. Uh, first time, I think, in one of the events that uh, we've been organizing here. So Ursula Parija, uh, fr who is with the, in the Caribbean, uh, uh, Central America and Caribbean program. And of course, Luther Anukur uh, in the SRO, or the Eastern and Southern Africa programs. Really, it's wonderful to have you with us uh, tonight. And of course, I've, I'm, going to, I'm welcoming everybody and all the people that have helped put these, thing, these, these events together and who support them from behind the scenes and all of the 
participants and partners uh, that are here or, or that are going to listen online, uh, you're very welcome and we, we, are, we are very proud to have you with us tonight. So enough from me, I think. I'm going to give the floor to Madame Le Ministre to tell us some good news. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted, first of all, to be part of this evening gathering. And I'm delighted to invite, uh, to welcome all of you to the celebration of protected and conserved areas with success stories from Biopama and BEST. Ladies and gentlemen, biodiversity represent, represented by all life forms on Earth is the bedrock from which well-functioning processes in nature supply us with the oxygen, water, food, all kinds of medicines that are indispensable for our survival. Biodiversity contributes to clean our environment, to make our planet livable and beautiful with wonderful landscapes. All these enhance our cultural, spiritual, and social life. So we are part of the biodiversity. We are not superior to the biodiversity. Biodiversity is also important for the economy. It is estimated that the global ecosystem services provide yearly benefits of more than 100 trillion US dollars. In many developing countries, including African countries, the economic growth relies on natural resource exploitation. Indeed, environmental resources and systems are the basis for socioeconomic prosperity and the quality of life. They provide goods and services that are essential for food and energy production, industrial and manufacturing development, pollution and disease control, and climate regulation, to mention but a few. Biodiversity is also critical for climate mitigation and climate resilience by storing carbon and redu re reducing impacts on climate change. Adversary climate change can induce negative impacts on biodiversity, on ecosystem services, putting our lives at risk. However, traditional GDP growth doesn't account for resource dep depression and environmental degradation, which in the long term risk to decrease the potential for economic growth and development. Ladies and gentlemen, friends of environment, destroying the nature has a boomerang effect. Indeed, we are impacted by the consequences of this dis de destruction in different ways. Food insecurity, water scarcity, climate-related disasters, inducing huge economic losses and new diseases, like the COVID-19 that is devastating the humanity currently. Moreover, <clears throat> Africa alone is expected to have 2 billion inhabitants in 2050. And the question is how, how could we live in harmony with nature? 
We have no choice. We have to live in harmony with, with nature. When we have population growing rapidly, more and more natural areas will be encroached, more pressure put on protected and conserved areas, hence their capacity to preserve biodiversity treatment. Ladies and gentlemen, are we part of the solution to reverse biodiversity loss and ecosystem degradation? Are we ready to be part of the solution? Let us be part of the solution. Otherwise, we are paving the way to our own extinction, to the human extinction. Individually and collectively, nationally and globally, we can change the current pathways of destroying biodiversity and release the pressure. Because as you have seen, all the disasters we are having nowadays in Europe, North America, Asia, it means the nature is speaking. The biodiversity is speaking. They want, uh, the biodiversity want the voice to be heard by giving us floods, by the, the res, raising of temperature. It means the nature is speaking. The nature is crying. We have to act now. So being part of the solution is currently knowledge to understand better the complexity of nature and how to conserve it. Take advantage of new technologies and innovations to revise our development policies and devise innovative financing and governance systems that would help to manage better our protected area. And through efficient management and equitable governance of our protected and conserved areas, we can surely reverse biodiversity loss and ensure resilience of our ecosystems to climate change and sustainability in the flow of ecosystem services that are crucial for the people and the nature. Being part of the solution is changing our consumption and production patterns. So from now on, we have to understand that why the nature is asking us to be friend with it. Because we have done what we were not supposed to do, or we have failed to do what we were supposed to do. So being part of the solution is reducing or stopping economic and the financial incentives that are detrimental to biodiversity, involving local communities in conservation and the restoration of ecosystems on which they depend. For example, in Rwanda, for us to protect the gorillas, for us to protect the park where we have gorillas, we involved the poachers, those who were behind the killing of gorillas. We involved them for protection. As you know, in French, in French there is a say that quand tu voyages avec un voleur, il faut lui confier tes bagages. Donc, we have, we have involved the poachers to protect the gorillas because they know each other. Now they have been behind the protection, the development, and the growing numbers of our gorillas. There is no poachers in our volcano park, from Rwanda at least, because they are involved in the protection and they are, they are reaping the fruits of the tourism 
because 10% of the income of the parks goes to the development of the surrounding population. We build the schools, we build the health centers and the hospitals, and they understand their role of protecting the gorillas because the services are nearby them and the park is serving them more than even the other population of the country. So um, we have to be part of the solution. So being part of the solution, we have to stop and to reduce the economic, the economic dependence on the, uh, and the incentives that are detrimental to biodiversity. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the last stages of developing the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. And if we aim to reverse biodiversity roles, we have to set the bar very high, be transformative, and set ambitious targets in terms of protected and conserved areas. We look forward to learning more about success stories about Bioparma and how they can inform better decision making in protecting these sanctuaries of biodiversity that are protected and conserved areas at all levels, locally, regionally, and globally. I would not conclude my remarks without applauding the creation of the IUCN Africa Protected Areas Congress, which is a landmark forum to demonstrate that the African conservation agenda should be owned and driven by us. Our people stand to harvest the benefits and it is also our responsibility. That is the statement made by His Excellency, the President of Rwanda, Paul Kagame. I am pleased to announce that in March 2022, the government of Rwanda will host the inaugural IUCN Africa Protected Area Congress, a park to discuss conservation of the continent's protected areas after the, re the relaunch of APAC in Kigali on 20th April this year. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude these remarks by, first of all, inviting you to join Rwanda in March to see the progress we have made in protecting the biodiversity and to be part of the success. On this, I end up my remarks by congratulating IUCN for organizing the World Conservation Congress for the benefits of biodiversity for people and nature. Let us be the solution of our mother nature. We have no plan B. We have no home B. This is the only home for the human being. So let us protect the nature by bringing transformative change in our everyday activity to conserve biodiversity and ecosystems. Saving the nature is saving our lives. Yesterday, uh, Harrison Ford said, guys, let us go to action. So guys, let us go to action. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Minister. And now I believe we are going to be joined by the Executive Secretary of the Convention on Biological Diversity, um, Mrs. Elizabeth Maruma Mrema. But she's coming via video message. Uh, video message yeah. She was not able to come to the Congress. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, it is my honor to address you at this event, celebrating success stories from the Bioparma and BEST. I regret 
that I cannot be physically present, but nonetheless appreciate the kind invitation by IUCN, the European Union, and the Organization of African, Caribbean, and Pacific States to address this event. These past few years have had many of us looking to the future, both with the hopes of soon emerging from this terrible pandemic, as well as for what the future holds for nature and biodiversity. This is especially so in the context of the Convention on Biological Diversity, as our parties are currently working hard to develop a new post-2020 global biodiversity framework. This framework, which will contain a new set of global goals and targets for biodiversity, must instill heightened ambition and an all-of-society approach if we hope to put ourselves on a path to a sustainable future. It's tempting in this forward-looking moment in time to seek out new approaches and new tools in the hope of making our goals more achievable. But there will be no silver bullet that will fix all of our problems. The good news, however, is that we, in fact, already have the tools in our toolkit to reach these goals. We simply need to look for them, understand why and how they worked, and scale them up. This is why the work of Biopharma and BEST is so important. These initiatives have been immensurably important in facilitating on-the-ground implementation and sharing the lessons learned from these efforts worldwide. And this is why they will even be more essential in achieving the goals of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. We need initiatives like Biopharma and BEST to help identify and support the diamonds in the rough and to support the scaling up of these success stories across the world. We, in the Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity, look forward to continued collaboration in crafting a future of living in harmony with nature. Thank you. Great. Nice to have a message from the Executive Secretary. And of course, the parties to the convention have been calling out Biopharma and BEST as part of the capacity development strategic framework for the implementation. And they're saying, don't wait, get on with it already. <laughs> it's, it's going to happen. And now it's my great pleasure to, to call upon uh, Mr. Philippe Maillot, the team leader in the Directorate General for International Cooperation of the European Commission. As I said, Philippe is one of the masterminds behind these initiatives, a great supporter of them, and a great, let's say, critical voice that says we can always do better. So Philippe, you, this is your moment to challenge us one step more. Okay, is that working, that one? This one? Yep. Yeah. No, today is time for celebration, so it's not uh, <laughs> always time for challenging. <laughs> so, uh, but, but uh, thank you, and uh, Madam Minister, uh, uh, of the director. Uh, help you with that. So, sorry? It's stuck. Yeah. So. Yeah, wait, just wait. There you go. So it'll irritate you all the time. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's really a, a pleasure to, to celebrate with you the, the key successes of the, the two programs, Bioparma and best indeed that we we launched at the European Commission and uh, with uh, in partnership with IUCN. It's really uh, very successful uh, programs. Right just before this event, we had the, the a long event on uh, Nature Africa, which is a new initiative launched by the European Commission and the African partners on protecting the key biodiversity no, the key landscapes for conservation and development. Because we strongly believe that the protected areas are uh, incredible leverage for human development, not only for conservation, and they are vital sites for protected planet, but also for the people living there. And so that's why we have launched this uh, initiative, uh, and uh, the um, Deputy Secretary General Pratt was also there. 
So it's only the third meeting that we have together the, today. So it's, uh, <laughs> but, uh, and uh, so it shows a very strong uh, uh, partnership also. And so clearly, what we need also that uh, that aspect to 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 push for more protection, for more development base of protected areas is also the link to monitoring to information. That's why a program like Bioparma is also uh, essen essential because it will give us really the, the, the tool, the, 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 the meter to, to, to monitor uh, how we in the right way or not. So it's really, it's a unique uh, moment. Huh? It's not uh, Russ Messermeyer in the previous session. He said it was the third, no, th uh, 13 uh, World Conservation Congress. It's only my first one, but uh, it's even if my hair is uh, the same color than uh, his hair. Uh, but, but clearly, that's a, a unique moment where we can celebrate uh, those uh, those uh, those issues. And uh, I would like really to to thank you, to thank Estelle also accompanying in uh, in this uh, adventure. And I will challenge you later on. <laughs> so thank you very much, and congratulations to all the success stories that we will see today. Great. Thank you so much, Philippe. So now I think I'm going to hand over the floor to uh, Christel. Uh, Christel, I, I mentioned, was the Assistant Secretary General of the Organization of Africa, Caribbean, and Pacific States. And Christel, I think you're going to introduce a number of other people. There's a, if, uh, I have a cue sheet as well in case, <laughs> but I'm sure you have them right. So um, would you like to go up? Or? Yeah, probably to start. Sorry. Thank you very much, um, Trevor, and uh, good evening uh, to, to all of you. Honourable Minister, um, your words were extremely inspirational. Thank you um, for sharing with us uh, your thoughts, your perspectives and your vision. Um, and, uh, you know, also, of course, uh, Elizabeth Marema, uh, the Executive Secretary, who always inspires me you know, when she speaks. Um, so we've been really fortunate to have two women leaders, um, you know, sharing with us the importance of uh, people-centered um, uh, biodiversity conservation and that relationship between the two. And so I think as Trevor has said, I've been given the um, pleasant task um, to over the course of the next um, I think it's going to be speedy because we're running out of time, but over the next about um, 20 minutes um, to introduce some speakers from, at the moment, I understand from Roxana, two of perhaps four um, that were meant to speak of our six regions of the OACPS. So um, we might try and send out scouts to find the other two, uh, but nevertheless, um, to really, um, for them to, as, as we hear uh, from the theme, to share stories with us about their key accomplishments um, under Bioparma. And so um, the Bioparma program, as we know, has been an investment of the Organisation of African, Caribbean uh, and Pacific States and the European Union uh, under the EDF intra-ACP cooperation. And we've already heard that it aims to improve the long-term conservation and sustainable use of natural resources in and across 79 members and six regions of the OACPS in protected areas and surrounding communities. Uh, Intra-ACP um, and inter-regional ACP cooperation, exchange and learning is an important hallmark of the program. And we've heard about this from uh, Trevor and its support to members and regions, active engagement, I hope, in COP15, um, and also the IUCN Africa Protected Areas Congress in 2022, as we heard from, uh, from the Honourable Minister, and we're all invited to attend, so I'm really hopeful to be able to come to Rwanda. <laughs> Um, I'll have to ask the Secretary General, but um, anyway, I'm sure that if you send him a letter, I might be there. <laughs> um, and, and this must be encouraged, um, given that the strengthening and facilitating of partnerships uh, at national, regional and global levels 
is a key outcome of Biopharma's endeavours. But before I do um, yield this microphone uh, to speakers uh, to hear their stories, we know um, that there are many that have not been able to join us uh, here in Marseille. And so we will um, hear from some Biopharma grantees via a short video that I now invite us all to sit, listen to, and watch. Thank you. For the partnership between Opegeta and Biopharma comes in handy in the sense that it is making data collection more accurate, data collection speedy, you know, um, moving from manual data entry to digital data capture and entry, which allows for quicker decisions, which allows for interpretation of, of what is happening in the field uh, to facilitate management decisions. Biopharma has supported the Seychelles Islands Foundation's determination in putting Aldebar in the best position to improve its conservation status, ensuring the greatest possible protection of Aldebar's native flora and fauna, and maintaining its outstanding universal values in a world where native species and biodiversity hotspots are in severe decline. Big thanks to the Biopharma for the first assistance we received, uh, our uh, OBM and the canoe, since that the site is uh, far inland uh, from uh, Sasamunga we currently live, or we actually live, uh, with a boat and a OBM, uh, it really uh, provides a good uh, means of transport or accessing the site uh, by our uh, tribe, or especially our rangers who will uh, really carry out uh, monitoring works or uh, effectively uh, as we expect. Uh, Retro accessibility to the reserve has also allowed us to work on the recovery of some of the most critically endangered plant species in Mauritius, such as the endemic Hibiscus genevi, which was thought to be extinct and was rediscovered in Mondrain in 1969, and Cidigam pinei, which is also endemic to Mauritius and has four known wild individuals left in the world. And they are only found in Mondrain reserves. Donc, press on a 75% d'activité qui ont été pris en charge avec ce projet. La restauration des écosystèmes marins par la réhabilitation des habitats marins, l'immersion de 250 récifs artificiels au niveau de certaines zones marines qui ont été quand même euh, dégradées. Après cela, donc, il y a la réhabilitation de la bande de filao, parce que pour, pour qui connaît Kayar, c'est que cette bande de filao joue un rôle extrêmement important, au-delà même donc, de la préservation, la conservation de la biodiversité. Par rapport au deuxième objectif, euh, il est question surtout d'accompagner euh, ces communautés à améliorer euh, certaines activités, histoire de leur permettre d'avoir un peu plus de revenus. Mais euh, cet apport en termes de revenus passe par beaucoup plus la promotion de cette ressource naturelle. Du tout, il faut les accompagner dans certains dispositifs, dans euh, parfois certaines infrastructures pour permettre à ce que le tourisme, surtout euh, local, soit valorisé pour euh, un lendemain meilleur. Under this project, we also supported indigenous communities by capacity building opportunities. Yashe Conservation Trust supports community members from buffering communities through capacity building. En tout cas, depuis, depuis l'engagement dans le service, en tout cas, ce n'était pas facile, et, vu, vu avec le temps. Mais l'arrivée du projet Biopama nous a allégé. En tout cas, on a eu des dotations et beaucoup de choses. Ils nous ont soutenus lors de notre formation. Au début, il n'y avait pas de l'énergie, on nous a doté aussi de l'énergie. Les moyens de déplacement aussi ils nous ont soutenus, en tout cas, vraiment. Et ils nous sont fiers. Là aussi, il y a de l'eau maintenant. On ne souffre plus encore pour gagner de l'eau. En tout cas, c'est vraiment, en tout cas, on est, on est vraiment fiers de leur soutien. Grâce au financement de Biopama Small Technical Grants, nous avons acquis en février 2021 ces deux nouvelles motos euh, de marque Honda euh, qu'on utilise aujourd'hui pour suivre diverses activités. Et aussi, nous allons construire 
trois centres d'information dans trois villages, dont le village de Mangabe, le village d'Agoul et le village d'Anjanoumand. Nous allons également améliorer ce site de campement afin de euh, faciliter l'accueil des visiteurs et des touristes étrangers. Over the course of this year, the Bioparma grant has allowed us to strengthen our enforcement and surveillance effort through the acquisition of two boat engines, surveillance equipment, training for staff and fuel needed for active enforcement within Lighthouse Reef Atoll Seascape and across one of our largest terrestrial sites, Coxcomb Basin Wildlife Sanctuary. The Obama project is one of our projects that really are coming hand in hand to support our education of So our greatest obligation as an organization is to see that as many people are taught on what to learn, to understand conservation. So that in the end, we all achieve the objective of uh, restoring our ecosystems. I mean, I think you'll all agree that um, hearing from 12 um, countries uh, from across the African, Caribbean and Pacific continents, um, even via video, is better than not hearing from them at all. And so um, I really did enjoy those interventions. It would have nice to have had them here, but nevertheless, um, they are still joining us, I'm sure, in spirit. Um, as I mentioned, unfortunately, we were going to hear four um, stories, four success stories, uh, but we are missing two uh, at the moment. So if I could just invite uh, Mr. Luther Anuka, he's the regional director of IUCN's regional office for Eastern and Southern Africa. Um, and so um, you have the floor. You can even talk for a little bit longer than three minutes if you want. No, thank you, uh, Christelle, um, Madam Minister, uh, Philippe from the EU, uh, Christelle from the Organization of African, Caribbean and uh, uh, Pacific States, uh, colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me to be speaking to you this evening and uh, to be here to talk about the uh, best and uh, success stories from, uh, from, uh, from Bioparma. Uh, but before I do that, I just wanted to um, to follow on what the minister had just talked about, the Africa Protected Area, uh, uh, Protected and Conserved Area Congress that's going to take place in Rwanda uh, next year in March. I just want to say that this is the first time that uh, uh, Africa comes together as a continent to do this. And so really greatly welcome you to uh, this initiative and to support this. Um, the Africa Protected Area and Protected and Conserved Area uh, Congress is extremely important because one, we think that this will be a stage for us to uh, get a common vision for protected and conserved areas in Africa. Secondly, we also think that this is going to be a big opportunity to profile the true value of protected and conserved areas, not only to conservation, but also to uh, development that is uh, taking place at a very fast pace in Africa. And we also see this as an opportunity to uh, foster innovation, especially to some of the uh, um, perennial problems uh, that are affecting uh, uh, um, the protected and conserved areas for a long time, such as sustainable financing, but also the need for building capacities across the region and, and, and many others. And of course, um, um, uh, one other thing that um, uh, this is going to be very important is that it's going to be a point for raising voices, voices for local communities. I think we already heard about the issue of um, uh, local communities and, uh, and also for environmental defenders. So you're all welcome and I hope that it will really uh, be a very exciting uh, moment for all of us, knowing that a lot of investment has gone into protected areas in, in Africa for many years. And so we know that there will be a lot of partners that will be keen to um, have this as an opportunity to share, but also to help co-create this common vision for the future. Um, 
that Congress will be taking place at the same time. Uh, uh, one of the things that it is going to foster is also trying to get a framework for continuously implementing uh, the post-2020 agenda. And as you all know, you can't go, um, uh, I mean, one of the major um, um, uh, aspects for taking forward the post-2020 agenda is, is going to be um, information, it's going to be um, uh, a framework for being able to track uh, our progress and our targets. And that brings me to Biopharma. So Biopharma in the region is actually a flagship biodiversity conservation program uh, in Eastern Southern Africa, and it's supporting evidence-based decision-making on biodiversity conservation uh, with a special focus on effective uh, management and equitable and fair uh, governance of protected and conserved areas. And we would want to thank uh, the European Union, uh, as has already been mentioned earlier, and also the uh, Organization of the African, Caribbean, and Pacific uh, States for taking on this innovation um, and promoting and supporting the biodiversity and protected area program, which has enabled the region to set up an observ a regional observatory for protected and conserved areas. And this is, this is helping countries uh, in the region to be able to track progress in their conservation efforts. The regional resource hubs, uh, the regional resource hub in Eastern Southern Africa is actually hosted by the Regional Center for Mapping and Resources for Development, RCM, RCMRD, uh, that is based uh, in Nairobi. And it's constantly updating and collecting information on management effectiveness and governance of protected and conserved areas, and regularly publishing um, the state of protected and conserved uh, areas. Um, this regional hub is actively engaging with all countries in the region to support them in collecting, analyzing data uh, on protected and conserved areas, but as well it is strengthening uh, institutional and individual capacities on management, effectiveness and governance. This includes of course a number of things such as training, uh, knowledge exchange, and also uh, publications on, on key topics of interest, such as a new report which is called Closing the Gap Report which reviewed the resourcing of protected areas in the region and made recommendations on diversification of approaches for resourcing of those areas. The resource hubs are also um, uh, particularly helpful to countries and stakeholders in achieving well-managed, fair and equitable protected and uh, uh, conserved areas, um, particularly monitoring progress towards targets which are set up by the region and also we hope that um, uh, these suggests will not, on, not only focus on um, things like the post-2020 agenda, but as well as the commitments that will be made from the Africa Protected Area Congress. So the first edition of, we call this report, Sopok, SOPACA. I hope that's the right pronunciation for it. But this is the State of Protected and Conserved Areas. Uh, was first published in November 2020. And of course, this is in time for the CBD uh, um, COP15 negotiations, uh, it provides a baseline um, information and assessment of key threats and opportunities to inform a regional approach to setting new targets for, um, for Africa as a whole. So the value of this report is its focus on specific regional context, which means that the recommendations are also very specific to the context, and um, it also includes opportunities for learning and for um, uh, recommendations uh, across the across the the globe. Um, IUCN therefore just looks forward to continuing uh, to work with various stakeholders uh, through the Biopharma program, especially in building um, uh, the, the 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 much needed resources for um, um, uh, knowledge products, tools, and 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 also human resources to ensure that we we jointly maintain the values which are held in. Uh, the natural areas of Africa. I was just talking, the Madam Minister was just telling me now as she was watching the video, that is it possible that through this program you can help to actually map the resources of Rwanda, uh, both the, um, um, the uh, um, I think she mentioned the trees, the, animal, the various species and all of that. And yes, I think that is the main reason why this program uh, does exist. So it is to try and make that difference because uh, as she intimated, it was mainly so that we know what we have to create that baseline, 
but also be able to plan into the future. So thank you very much, and we, we really are grateful that this program is making a difference uh, in the management of protected areas. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you very much, Luther, and I think that you've really sort of outlined um, the absolute relevance of, uh, of the Biopharma program and some of the... Um, you know, tangible assets and information um, that are being developed for good decision making, but also for informing things like the post 2020 uh, global biodiversity framework and informing, you know, the, um, the IUCN uh, Africa uh, Protection and Conservation Area Congress. <laughs> I think I missed a couple of words out when I talked about it, um, uh, uh, Honourable Minister. So I just wanted to get that correct. Um, that's going to be hosted in Rwanda, uh, both of those in 2022. Um, so it is, I think, I think uh, the Executive Secretary talked about that, you know, that Biopharma and BEST are extremely important um, instruments uh, for informing uh, the uh, the post 2020 GBF. So without further ado, I now will invite yet another regional director, <laughs> uh, newly appointed, I understand, um, and that's Miss Ursula Paria. I'm not going to even try your sir, the next part of your name. You can tell everybody because I'll just, I won't, I'll make a meal of it. I'll make an utter meal of it. But um, you are the, um, in, in charge of the regional office for Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean. Um, and so um, you have the floor. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you so much. Um, I want to thank Trevor for putting this ev wonderful event together. And thank you, everyone who is joining us. Um, thank you, Madam Minister, for your for your words. Um, thank you to our colleague from the European Commission for being here. Um, well, for IUCN office, it's really a great honor to be representing here the local communities, the grantees, and the real people doing all the action um, in the Caribbean. Um, the Caribbean uh, region and countries have been really receptive for the Biopama uh, project. And I want to just go back to the slogan, no? It's knowledge to action for a protected planet. And I think the Caribbean countries are really a great example of how they have been able to take forward these both um, uh, complementary words, knowledge and action. In the knowledge part, I want to share with you that uh, the protected areas management effectiveness framework has been uh, pushed forward. Uh, we are helping them in raising awareness, building capacity, and giving the technical support that is needed to develop this framework. Right now, we have 12 sites with assessment across five countries in the Caribbean. Um, and a special mention to San Lucia, who has actually developed a special toolkit uh, to take forward this um, framework. As we know, so that's the knowledge part. In the action part, uh, we know that Biopama has an action component. And in the region, we have been able already to put into action 2 million euros um, into this uh, granting mechanism. And we are very pleased to share with you that seven of the awarded um, action component grants are actually already adopting the recommendations from these assessments and putting them on the ground. So what is happening is that these investments are uh, on the ground are made uh, based on clear, robust, and reliable data. And this is all a great partnership between the local communities, the grantees, the local authorities, and uh, of course IUCN as uh, just a facilitator, as a catalyzer of this great approach. Uh, thank you again to the European Commission for trusting and for pushing this, um, for putting this action, these investments in the ground. I think that we have heard about, uh, you know, how countries need to bounce back better, build back better. We really need to take into account the natural capital and uh, building these tools, putting this knowledge into action, it's the right path to do that. 
I just had three minutes <laughs> of uh, my speech, so I don't want to uh, put more time between us and the cocktail. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ursula. So um, I don't want to put more time in <laughs> either. Thank you very much, Christelle, for, for that segment. Um, it, it, uh, when, when Ursula was, was speaking, it reminded me the last time some of us got together was actually in Lima, but we took a major delegation from the Caribbean to Lima, and, uh, and, and so that, you know, Via Palma was present not only in, in your region, but in the whole of, of the Latin America Caribbean region. It was a really special occasion, and we, we don't know what happened to the two years that since then, actually, <laughs> um, but people have been busy. And one of the things is that I know that um, one of the teams has been putting together a, a film, but they want to just show us a, a quick trailer for that film. And um, that would give us a nice little vi uh, visual kind of send off, uh, because after that, we're going to go to the snacks and some soft drinks. And I think they might even have rescued some of the bottles of wine from yesterday when we were forced to leave <laughs> so um, the uh, so this was not financed by the European Commission through the in European Development <laughs> Fund um, let's hope there is something there I can't I hope I haven't promised you, promised you something that there isn't um, but please make sure that you do have your name on uh, on the register so that if we do have the inspectors coming along we know we can defend ourselves again and I'll then ask the technical team to play the video. And thank you all for being with us. That's great. Remy is here, by the way, so the producer of the film, and uh, obviously anyone like to talk to him about it. He's at the back there. Put up your hand, Remy. He's there. Um, and I, 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 yeah, it's great. Congratulations. We want to see the whole, the whole thing. And um, it's, it's all about local action for really big impact, ultimately. I think this is the, the, the storyline. Roxana told me to, to just let you know that during this session, there's Roxana, she's over there. During this session, there are many, many more testimonies from grantees, action component grantees. They will be uh, rolling on the screen. If you see something that interests you, just ask uh, Roxana. And then let me just first, first of all thank all of you for coming this evening, the lovely words that you all spoke, uh, uh, honored guests. And I want to, I didn't put this event together. There's a fabulous team a fabulous group of people that is working on this program and uh, really my hat goes off to them. Chapeau for all the work you've done and Roxana, Roxana is the main architect and we also have Alex who's hiding at the back and, 
and also Katrin, I don't know where is Katrin, there's Katrin, and, and the, we also have young professionals working with us every day, and then of course we have the Bio Parma regional coordinators, especially, you know, from the different parts of, of the, so please circulate, speak to one another, don't break the rules, and have a nice time. <laughs> L'air marine protégée de Kayar dans le cadre de la mise en œuvre de son plan d'aménagement.